Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math questions out of this book here. The official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 245. And today is our lesson number 153. This is the continuation of the work that we, that we did yesterday. Problem number 18 is what we're working on. And today we'll do the part C. In part C, they ask us to find the y intercept. Find y intercept of a line with slope 3 and passing through point negative 2 and 1. It has a coordinates, it has a coordinates of negative 2 and 1. Well, we have to, what we have to use here is exactly what they, what they are talking about here, which is intercept slope form. Slope intercept form is called slope intercept form of a line is what we are going to have to use here, which looks something like this. Which, which looks something like this and we have seen it before, it's nothing new for us y equals mx plus b, where y represents the y coordinate, the y coordinate of any point on the line. You can pick any point on the line, you plug in the y coordinate of that line, you plug in the slope of the line here, slope of the line, if you know it, plug in the x coordinate plug in the x coordinate of the chosen point, whichever point you chose here for the y to, to use the y coordinate of, and finally you have your y intercept. So it has four pieces of information. In this equation, there are four pieces of information. You have your x and y coordinate of the chosen point, you have the slope, and you have the y-intercept. Which means, if any one of those four bits of pieces are missing, and if you know the other three, we can solve for the fourth one. For example, if you know the y-intercept of the line, and if, we know, and if we know which at least one point that the line goes through, we can calculate the slope. On the other hand, if we know the slope, and if we know at least one point the line goes through, we can figure out the y-intercept, which is precisely what we need here. We know one point the line goes through, we're going to use these coordinates here. For y, we're going to use 1. For x, we're going to use negative. For x, we're going to use negative 2. For the y, we're going to use the 1. We know the slope. The slope is 3. We solve for d. That's what it is. Very simple. Very straightforward. Let's do it, shall we? So y equals mx plus b. One more time. This is our point. Negative 2 and 1. So y equals 1. The slope we are told is 3. x coordinate is negative 2. And b represents the y-intercept. So negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. So 1 equals negative 6 plus b. It is very simple. Bring the 6 on the other side and b equals 7. That's what it is. This is our y-intercept. That's the y-intercept of the line. That's what it is. That's 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 the end of part C, I believe. The line calc it says find the y-intercept of the line with the slope three that passes through the point negative two one. We've done that. Let's go to part D, the last part. Let's see if we're done with all of this. In the last part, in 18, in 18 D, they are asking for the 
x intercept, sorry, they are asking for the x intercept of all the lines that we came across in A, B, and C. Lost it. That's not going to be fun. So now we have to go back and find out all the lines. x intercepts of lines from A, B, and C. Well, C is going to be difficult because we haven't actually figured out the equation of the line yet. All we figured out was the y-intercept in the part C. So we're going to actually figure, we're going to actually have to figure out the equation of the line of the line in part C before we can figure out its x-intercept. But for A and B, we do have the equation. For part A, the equation was the equation of the line was for part A. All right, yeah, two x, two y plus x equals zero. Two y plus x equals six, rather. And x-intercept, x-intercept is where, I should have made a note of it before I wrote that. x-intercept is where the line cuts the x-axis. That is, y is equal to 0. y is equal to 0 at that point. So we, we have our equation and we set it equal to 0. So the equation of the line was, for part A, the equation of the line was 2x plus 6 equals 2x plus 2y plus x equals 6. Put y equal to 0 in there, 2 times y plus x. Oh, there you go, x equals 6. That's your, that's your y-intercept, x equals 6. Let's go on to the next one. For the, for the x-intercept of part B, the line was the line for the line was 3y equals x plus 3. Again, you said y equals 0, and you end up with x plus 3. 0 equals x plus 3, which means x equals negative 3. Very good. So that is the x-intercept for the second part. These are not difficult things. These are just tedious things, and you have to learn how to do these things because. Of course, they're not in the exam. They're not going to, you're not going to see a question like this with three far parts to it, taking so much time. They're just going to ask for bits and pieces from here and there, and you have to be able to quickly figure out what they're asking and how to figure it out. Do you understand? So, if they ask for the y-intercept, you know how to, you should know how to do it. If they're asking for the y-intercept y here, and if they give you the slope and one point, you should be able to do it like that. Just plug it in in this equation here, like we did before, and figure out the intercept. Or if they give you the y-intercept of the line, if they tell you what the line, y-intercept of the line is, and if they tell you at least one of the points that the line goes through, you should be able to figure out the slope, and so on and so forth. Where was I? Did we finish the second part? Yeah, we finished the second part. Let's go to find the x-intercept of the third part for which we first need the line. For which we need to first need the line. Now, for the, for the third part, we know that for the part, part C, we know that the line goes through, let me start from the very beginning, so I need the room, because I need the room. For the part C, we know the line goes to, has a slope of 3, and it goes through negative 2 and 1. Let's find out the equation, okay? And we're going to use, obviously, the point-slope form. Why point-slope form? Because that's exactly what we're, what we're showing here, point-slope. Point-slope form which is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. y minus y1, which is 1, equals m, which is 3, slope, x minus x1, which is negative 2. Since x turns out to be negative 2, I want to use the bigger bracket outside so that we can emphasize the fact that x is negative 2. So we get y minus 1 equals 3 times x plus 2, x, 3 times x is 3x, 3 times 2 is 6, y minus 1, bring 1 to the other side and you end up with y equals 3x plus 7. Now we have the equation of the line. To find the x-intercept, we set x equal to 0. If we set x equal to 0, y equals 7, that's your x-intercept.
next Rx intercept. That's it. You're done finally. So in the part D, they wanted the x intercept of all the three part, first three parts, A, B, and C, and we have done that. And that I believe is the end of it. And that was problem number 18. I'll see you tomorrow when we will deal with parabola. And if you're shaky on the concept of parabola, I'm telling you right now ahead of time, if you are shaky on it, if you do not have you haven't actually commanded, you haven't even if you haven't actually acquired the command of the concept of parabola, they do not require you to know more, uh, they do not require you to know a lot about parabola, but they do expect you to know at least the elementary concepts of parabola. What the equation of the parabola looks like, what the shape of the parabola is, what is the line of symmetry, how to shift it left and right, how to shift it up and down. Those, those things you should know. They expect you to know this thing. I'm going to say it one more time. You have to know what the standard form of the equation looks like of parabola. We have to know what, what the point. What does vertex means? We have to know about the line of symmetry. What does it mean to line of symmetry of a parabola? And you have to understand how to shift the parabola left and right, how to shift it up and down. And if you have trouble with any of these concepts that I just enumerated, you have to go and watch this video before you watch tomorrow's video. I'm going to make a note here so that you have it for tomorrow. This is for tomorrow. Parabola. Oh, plastic. I'm making a big fuss about it and I do not actually have the days written, written out when I covered the concept of parabola. This was this was great. I was looking at the days which was a different concept which has, a, which has to do with factorization. Anyway, it's very simple. It's very simple. I'll tell you what to do. Just go to the search part in the search box. Just type in my name, Kishwani, and just type in parabola. That's all. And it will pop right up. I think I covered three or four days on the topic. Watch them in sequence and learn all of those concepts if you do not know them already before you watch tomorrow's, tomorrow's video because otherwise you'll be lost. I will not have the luxury of starting everything from scratch to explain all the concepts over and over again because otherwise we'll be at, the, at that problem for an hour. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.